I seem to have done something wrong. Stand by. Okay, so what we have to do is we have to fixate every single shape together that doesn't move. This includes every detail on the gun. You see all that stuff is free floating. It just bounces and spazzes out. It's ridiculous. So what we have to do is we have to go in, fixate every shape, including the shadows and everything, to the gun. This is one of the most tedious processes, but it seems to go by quick sometimes, if you know what you're doing. Of course, you could just uh, glue everything together using the glue glue together tool, but really that has a lot of errors and if you accidentally get something snagged on the background there's no way to get it off without loosening everything and then fix that and it all back together again. Also um, Oh, this has border, doesn't it? Um, so what I'm doing is, well, let's move this to the front, add a circle. Hold on, let's delete that circle. Actions, add center axle, add that. Boom, boom. Boom, boom. So what's still floating around? Alright, so this piece. And there's these pieces. You'll be able to tell which pieces are floating around by stopping and st stopping or starting the simulation and hitting Control Z to stop it. All right, so that barrel needs to be fastened down. <sighs> Come on. There you go. And I think we're nearing the end of this fixation process. You have to fixate everything and this makes it so that you don't have any... Uh, uh oh. Looks like we've got something snug. Oh, right here. Right. So, like that. Mm. And I think that's just about it. Select everything, collision layer, and collision layer zero. Watch what happens. Well, apparently it floats off into space still. Alright, now we... there we go. By the way, I hinged on the center of the selector lever. And so that allows it to rotate freely. So right now what we're going to do is we're going to fixate that to the background. And take the trigger actually just attach a hinge about right there now the trigger can be pulled okay so this should be collision layer A perfect and now we'll start oops getting into the mechanisms be sure to save often if you make one mistake and you have so much stuff in between what you d did and you've and you made a mistake a long time ago, it's almost impossible to uh, save a file. You have to start from scratch almost all over again. If you start from nothing, so hit Control S, Enter, Y. If you want to, so that you have different save files, you can just hit Control Enter, Enter, and that'll save it as your file plus 000, 0001, 0002, and that makes it a little bit easier. I just never bothered with that, so I have the bad habit of doing what I do, is control say, control S, enter Y. Alright, so now let's get into the mechanisms. Okay, before we begin, you're going to have to understand a few basic mechanical principles. Um, these are the, uh, right now, we're going to go over the firing mechanism, and what I have here is the generic M4A1 firing mechanisms, or the M4 mechanisms, which has the burst kit. So what I'm going to go over first is semi-automatic, and this is one of the simplest uh, mechanisms there is. So you notice there's this red hook 
Notice how it's spring-loaded, so when I pull it down, it kind of rotates on the same hinge as this, as the trigger. And notice that the trigger rests, or the hammer rests, right in this area right here. When you pull the trigger, I'm going to do this with the enter key. Actually, no, I'm just going to drag it. Notice how that uh, hook catches the hammer on that shelf right there, right here preventing it from dropping again or if you drag it obviously it's going to drop but in real life this is how the M4 works as well or the AR-15 it's a little bit different the shapes are a little bit different but this is basically how it functions so when you release the trigger again watch what happens it drops back into the sear the sear is this piece right here this corner of this piece in the trigger bar and the hammer is this little notch that it rests in so when you I'll show you again when you pull the trigger it drops and then the hook kit is cammed out of the way by the hammer but then it falls back into place to prevent it from going the other way so that prevents it from dropping and slam firing again otherwise this would happen and this is not what you want this isn't full auto full auto functions a little bit differently and I'll go over that in just a second Okay, so in full auto, you have the same mechanisms, however, the uh, disconnector, this piece right here, the hook, is defeated by the uh, selector lever. So the selector lever pushes down on it, preventing it from rotating far enough to catch the hammer. So you notice how that's kind of out of the way, even when I pull the trigger, how that's kind of out of the way. If this piece weren't here it would fire uh, semi-automatically like that so to kind of uh, demonstrate hold on how auto works is the disconnector is defeated by the selector cam and the blue piece this one right here is called the auto sear or the lightning link or the interrupter I prefer calling it an interrupter because it interrupts the drop of the hammer Notice what happens. This is the M4 or the AR-15 or M16 bolt carrier, the basic shape. It's not true to life. However, it serves the same purpose. Notice what happens when the when the bolt moves rearwards. Notice how it kind of catches right here until the bolt closes. This prevents the hammer from dropping and uh, prematurely firing around without the bolt all the way to battery and that prevents all sorts of misfires and nasty stuff that you don't want happening. If that happened in real life you could actually kill yourself by the gun blowing up in your hands. Um, so what this does is it kind of prevents all those issues and it also provides um, a controlled rate of fire. So as the bolt cycles back it is, uh, let me slow this down, as the bolt cycles back it releases the auto sear or interrupter so that the hammer can catch it. It functions, or the or that it catches the hammer, and it functions similarly to the disconnector. But when the bolt closes, it shelf knocks the auto sear out of position so that it can um, drop the hammer. When I release the trigger, it just drops back into the sear, the hammer. So. Next up is the burst kit, and, you're, and you might want to pay a little bit of attention to this. This is a little bit more tricky. It's a little bit less um, obvious of a mechanical pro principle, but it's nonetheless relatively simple. So stay tuned. Okay, before you freak out, just buckle down and kind of pay attention to this. You, and it's not that bad, it's using the basic principles of uh, semi-automatic fire and full automatic fire with slight modifications to adjust when the disconnector actually engages the hammer. So this is your burst disconnector, you notice it has an extra hook right here. It's got the same rear shape of the um, other disconnector, this one right here. Notice how that hook shape is relatively similar. But when I pull the trigger, watch what happens. You see this wheel right here, how it engages this hook? Notice there are two deep notches. So the shallow notches cam backwards so that it doesn't engage the hammer yet. And the auto sear holds it back until it 
closes again, the bolt, and so it fires once. This is the second time firing. Watch what happens on the third time. The uh, notch on the burst cam is deep enough to allow the burst disconnector to rotate forward like this enough to catch the hammer so that it never even engages the auto sear on the third shot. So that's how you obtain a three round burst. And the reason I wanted to show you this is so that you know how it functions. A lot of people don't understand this concept. I, for the longest time, thought it was some kind of electronic component in a firearm, which was kind of silly, but it made sense to me. You know, it's programmed to engage the hammer on the third shot, but that's not how it functions. It's purely mechanical. And there are different kinds of burst cams. This is the M4, the Eugene Stoner Burst Kit. And it's a fairly simple design. Hold on, I'll speed this up. So you have one. And you notice that it drops in on the first deep notch. That's because the hammer is forward enough so that it doesn't catch the disconnector like this. Ready? So the disconnector can't catch the hammer. However, um, just pay attention to this. Uh, you notice this hook is right now in this deep notch. When you pull the trigger again, it first rides to the first shallow notch, second shallow notch, which both are too, too shallow to allow the disconnector to rotate forward far enough to catch the hammer. But on the third shot, it rotates into the deep notch, which allows it to rotate and catch the hammer. So again, this is semi-automatic, where it's just an unmodified, where the disconnector catches the hammer after every shot. Then you have automatic, where the disconnector is disabled, and um, the auto sear holds the hammer back until the bolt closes. Then you have burst where the disconnector or the burst disconnector is allowed to move the semi disconnector is disabled and the auto sear is still functioning however the burst disconnector is is kind of uh, stunted by the burst wheel so I hope that clarified a little bit about how the three firing modes work and if you have any questions just leave a que question or comment in the comment section below and I'll try to answer it as promptly as I can. Hopefully this did clarify everything well enough that you do understand it and um, let's move on to the tutorial on how to start building. Actually real quick I want to go over some of the basic mechanical pro um, principles that, uh, fun that function in most firearms. So you have a a representation of a gas system where the bolt is locked until a gas pressure is applied to the piston driving the bolt and bolt carrier rearward or the bolt carrier I should say which unlocks the bolt and allows the whole assembly to move backwards by either the recoil of the bolt of the round going off or the um, inertia or the kinetic energy that the piston has driving backwards. I think the AK-47 the gas pressures are so high that it knocks the bolt carrier back fast enough that it continues to drive rearward regardless of how much energy is still present in the barrel. Then you have straight blowback where the bolt is never locked it's just driven the cartridge oops into the chamber. The headspace is your extractor or whatever your headspace is. Um, your headspace could be the bottleneck of your cartridge if you have a rifle cartridge. It could be the rim of the cartridge if you have a revolver style cartridge. Or it could be some other kind of rim or combination of things. In, in a rimless cartridge like this one where the rim, the true rim, is actually uh, flush with the rest of the body of the casing, the headspace is the extractor itself. And then you have short recoil where the 
uh, barrel and bolts move rearward for a short period of time and then the barrel is unlocked and the bolt continues moving rearward. It functions similarly to blowback where the force of the round going off is enough to cycle the action. However, it is modified so that some of the recoil is driven into the barrel as well, which reduces the overall perceived recoil. So I'll give a demonstration of all three. Then blowback. Then short recoil. So you notice that short recoil and blowback are relatively the same. However, the short recoil is mainly used in pistols, whereas blowback is used in the gun that we're designing right now. So stay tuned and we'll start getting to the mechanisms.